we're seeing, uh, you know, is a betrayal of uh, British Columbians and, and uh, Canadians and the values we place on wild fish. It's like a grand experiment gone horribly wrong. Fish farms are killing off wild salmon. The story of salmon farming is a sad saga of government denial and obstruction, of history repeating itself in country after country with disastrous economic, social, and ecological consequences. It's a story that continues to unfold, despite a growing mountain of science telling us that we should know and act better. It's the story of a predictable collapse of one of the world's last natural abundances, wild salmon. The salmon farming story is one in need of a much happier ending. The independent scientific community speaks with a single voice on this issue, that industrial scale salmon farms in British Columbia are indisputably linked to the decline of wild salmon populations, full stop. If the fish farmers want to uh, play the same game the cigarette manufacturers did for many years and live in denial, they're welcome to it, but it's not going to give rise to any solutions. Sea lice and other impacts from salmon farms clogging coastal waters around the world have already taken a heavy toll on wild salmon. And wherever wild salmon have slipped away, there are governments and companies going to great lengths to avoid doing things the right way. I would blame governments and the way governments and industry behave in this, this interlocked, handmaiden relationship, if you like. The disastrous impacts of salmon farming have been reported in all areas where the industry operates. We've got a serious decline in salmon stocks in the area, which we attribute largely to uh, sea lice that comes from the fish farms. We have an unknown measure of impact uh, far field effects, incremental impacts that that has on other resources such as clams. We recently talked to some of Canada's top fishery scientists who have studied and published extensively on the harm salmon farms pose to wild fish. If there's an overarching message, it's one of incredible denial of published science and the scientific process. This denial has defined the battle lines to save wild salmon and the coastal communities that depend upon it. And saving the salmon also means looking after the bears, eagles, whales, the forests that are essential for fighting climate change, and historic indigenous culture at whose heart the salmon lies. Wild salmon are literally the heart and sustenance of some of the last great wild places on the planet, but for how long? If the salmon disappear along our coastline or are greatly diminished, we're going to see a tremendous loss of many of our icon species, such as the grizzly bear and the eagle. What we're seeing is a massive fortification of denial, obfuscation, uh, you know, misdirection, and uh, it's being funded by the federal government and the provincial government. And uh, you know, British Columbians are getting darn angry about what's happening here. Despite the well-worn denials from government and industry, the impacts of open cage salmon farming on wild salmon are well documented and straightforward. The foremost of these is the infestation of young salmon smolts by sea lice from the farms. While sea lice are a naturally occurring parasite in the open ocean, fish farms act as breeding grounds for lice, greatly magnifying parasite impacts in coastal waters. Myriad salmon farms are often placed in the same sheltered inlets through which the baby salmon migrate to rearing areas and the open ocean. Smolts invariably become infested by the lice, and the consequences are devastating. Here we are in front of a fish farm in Bedwell Inlet in the back of Clackwood Sound. This is one of six fish farms that the salmon smolts, when they emerge from the rivers in the springtime, would have to pass by in order to reach the open sea. When they run into a louse, um, it, it is a huge organism compared to them. This is a, this is a comparison to, to you having a 40-pound parasite chewing through your back. The science has, has largely been known for decades. Uh, the European experience, uh, which has been going on much longer uh, with salmon farms than it has in North America, um, they've dealt with all of these issues. And so, um, you know, it, it was predicted that we would be dealing with exactly the same issues if we tried to mimic their industry. <laughs>